I know. All right, here we go. Jack, while you're at home, no one told me to hit record, so this is on you. Here we go. We are evaluating this thing. We're convert the hint here is converting it to polar. All right, because otherwise you are doing one plus i, and you would have a whole lot of them that you would be multiplying together. Anybody really want to foil that out? And I didn't even get to, I got tired of writing it, let alone actually doing it. Okay. So this is in rectangular form. This is my X. What would my Y be here? It'd be one. I've got X and Y. Let's convert it to polar. So that means we're trying to go to R and theta. How could I figure out what my R is given X and Y? Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So in this case, it's 1 plus 1 equals r squared. So 2 is r squared. So r is the square root of 2. Cool. I know what my r is. The other thing I need to do is find my angle. How could I find my angle? Tangent. We would do tangent of theta equals y over x. So when is tangent going to get me 1? 45 or 225. Which one of those do I want? Do I want 45 or 225? 45, because the X and the Y are both positive. So this is 45 degrees. Okay, so first thing we did is we converted it to polar. And now that we're in polar, this problem becomes a whole lot less daunting. Okay, Z to the fifth power is not that bad. Okay, what do I need to do with my radius if I'm taking Z to the fifth power? Take it to the fifth. So that means one times two times three times four times five. That, that's what I'm doing. I'm taking that thing right there, the radius to the fifth power. What is radical two times radical two going to get me? What are these two going to get me? So it is two times two, which would be four with a radical two left over. Cosine. What do I need to do with my angle if I'm taking it Z to the fifth power? 45 times five would get me. 225 plus I sine 225. Boom. That, I raised it to the fifth power. Okay. So, boom, I did that. Technically, that's a right answer, but it's in polar form right now. So, let's get back to what we started with originally, because if I were to foil that out, I would end up in rectangular form. So, right now, I've got R and theta. This is R. This is theta. I want to get back to X and Y. And so you could do two things. You could do this formula, x equals r cosine theta, and do y equals r sine theta. But remember, the easiest way to do that is just distribute, because that's my r and that's my theta. So 4 square root of 2. Cosine of 225 would be negative square root of 2 over 2. What is square root of 2 times square root of 2 going to give me? 2. So that would be 8 divided by 2, otherwise known as negative four because all that's going to cancel i got a negative sign same thing would happen here if i distributed that out it would be two times no, i'm just kidding four square root of two times whatever sign at four square root of two is or sign at 225 is it would be negative square root of two all over two that would get me two which would cancel with that and it's negative four so in the end if i would have foiled that whole thing out z to the fifth power is negative four minus four i You could do it the other way, and probably the other way wouldn't tear, wouldn't actually be that bad. I talk about it pretty scarily, like we can do it, but we could handle that. But doing it that way allowed us just to practice a whole lot of skills. We just converted two polar. We just did something to a power, and then we converted back to rectangular. That problem alone covers about a third of the test. Questions with what we did there? Again, on Friday, we focused on equations. Today, we're going to focus on graphing okay so i passed you out a little blank sheet of paper there we're going to put that to use you're going to be able to graph it's hard to graph on whiteboards uh, especially these guys so we're going to graph on here instead okay so it's kind of like whiteboards only it's on a piece of paper i gotta walk around to check your answers so on that first graph right there i'm giving you a little bit of a challenge but you're trying to see what you can do you're talking with your neighbor you're using your calculator and helping yourself to graph 10 sine 4 theta Okay, work together and try to figure out what 10 sine of 4 theta is. Go. Here we go. We are graphing this thing. 10 sine 4 theta. It is a rose. We have eight petals. 
What type of symmetry is this thing going to have? Y, because it's sine. The maximum. It's 10 times something. What would I want to go here for sine of 4 theta to make this as big as possible? 1, so the radius is 10. Then you are answering the question, when is sine 4 theta equal to 1? Well, 4 theta would be equal to 90 degrees. And then divide by 4, divide by 4, it is 22 and a half degrees. That is when my first pedal is, 22 and a half. Okay, so if you look at this graph, there's 45. 22 and a half would be in the middle of that. I'm going to have a total of eight pedals. Four, five, six, seven, eight. How can I figure out how far apart each pedal is? You are taking your four, full circle, which is 360 degrees. We're going to divide it into eight parts because I'm going to have eight pedals that are equally spaced. So if we take 360 divided by eight, we figure out each one is 45 degrees. And so you could continue to add. I'm not going to write them down for this one because it is going to get kind of annoying. But right there, that's the middle. So right there, right there, that would be the middle. So split that. That would be there. That would be there. And there. Okay. When I connect these dots, again, use your calculator to figure out what's going on. But I'm drawing some petals that are going to look like this. I've got four there on the top, and I should have four here on the bottom. One. Oh, no. It's starting to get ugly. Two. Three. Well, that's not bad. Not great either, but there's my answers. Questions on how I made that picture? It should look symmetrical. If it doesn't look symmetrical, you made a mistake. Okay? It might not be the greatest drawler of all time, but it should look somewhat symmetrical. Like, remember, use your calculator. I go to my graph. I hit Y equals. I'm going to type in 10 sine 4 theta and hit graph and make sure that my picture matches what I have there. Questions on what we just did? Let's continue with that problem with your neighbor. Figure out what would the restrictions need to be to get you this pedal and this pedal. What would your restrictions have to be to get just those two pedals graphed? Remember on Thursday last week, we did that a lot of different ways. We wrote some equations, but you can always just use your calculator and guess and check and figure it out. Okay, use your brain, use your calculator, figure that out with your neighbor. Go. From when until when do I need to graph this? What do you think? Pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. What would you do to find those values? Okay, trace it slowly. I agree with that. So we graph it. You hit the trace button. And then we should be able to follow this graph, okay? So we work our way out. We're thinking like right about there. So you get like 0.79. You got to use your brain a little bit. You got to know that that's pi over 4. But if you think, hey, that's probably pi over 4, you can always check. Uh, just hit the trace button and type in pi over 4 and be like, is that the same? Oh, yeah, it is the same. We could continue to trace from there. So that's the pedal that we wanted. Cool, we're still on that pedal. We're still on that pedal to right about there. We get 2.36, and we might be like, hey, which fraction is that? We'll just try them. Okay, I'm only going to give you ones that are on the unit circle. It's not like I'm going to make it 7 pi over 12 or something like that. But we go trace. Hey, we think it's ending at 3 pi over 4. Are we? Yeah, we are. Make sense on how we did that? I don't care how you get an answer. I just want you to use your brain and figure it out to get that answer. Let's do another. Okay. On the second graph, let's graph this guy. Let's go 2 minus 8 cosine theta. 2 minus 8 cosine theta. Go ahead and graph that for me. See what you can do. We start off here. What is the type of graph on this thing? With the loop, without, I don't necessarily, I, I remember, but it, let's say we didn't. 2 minus 8 cosine theta. All you got to do is type into your calculator, hit graph. Oh, cool. It's got a loop. It's Limasan with a loop here. Okay, so Limasan with loop. What type of symmetry does it have if it's cosine graph? X-axis. Okay, my maximum. It's 2 minus 8 times something. What number would I want to plug in here to make this as big as possible? You'd want it to be negative 1. 
my radius is, I'm sorry, if my radius is negative 1, it's 2 plus 8 would get me 10. When is cosine of theta going to be equal to negative 1? 180. So that is one of my dots. So 10 comma 180. So boom, right there, there's a dot. Remember, this thing has x-axis symmetry. So the way we go around it is we're going to start there and work my way around. You're always going to use the three big ones. Okay, so 180, 90, and 0 are going to be used. So I can already throw those on there. Okay, there's going to be one in between them. Okay, in between 180 and 90. The one I want to use is the place where x is negative 1 half. Where is x going to be negative 1 half? 120. If I plug in 120 degrees, then it is 2 minus 8 times negative 1 half. So it's 2 plus 4. It gets me 6. This one would get me 2 at 60 degrees is the other spot I care about because at that spot, the x is 1 half. So it would be 2 minus 4. So it would be negative 2. And at 0, I would have 2 minus 8. It would be negative 6. If you don't believe me, plug them in. We got that point. At 120, it would be 6. At 90, it would be 2. At 60, it would be negative 2. So we would be here, but it's negative radius. So I ride the line across. And then my last one is at zero degrees, I'm negative six. So I'm across to that side. We connect those dots, see what happens. So we're going around there through back to there. That's only half the graph. Then we got to be symmetrical over that line to get the second half. We take these little guys and we fold them over. That goes there. That goes there. That goes there. And we kind of roll back out to there, to there, to there. There's my graph. Questions on graphing those things? Make sure you're good at them. I know some of you can struggle at times. Make sure you can figure them out. We're almost done. Stay with me here. This graph right here, two things I want you to do. First thing I want you to do is tell me what is the equation that would get you this graph. So using your calculator, using your brain, what equation would get you that graph? Second thing I want you to do, it's not on your paper. You would have to draw it in. The second thing I want you to do is... Tell me the restrictions. What restrictions would you need to get those pedals? Go. All right, here we go. So we got to come up with this equation first. And there's a couple different ways we could do it. The first thing I would do is say, what kind of graph is this? Is this a sine or a cosine graph? Cosine. How can we tell it's cosine? X-axis symmetry. It's a rose, so we need a number in front of my theta. What number is going to be in front of my theta here? In front of my theta? Three, because there's three pedals out in front of everything is five because of the stretch. We might not, that might not be perfect. Let's plug it in, see if it matches. Five, cosine, three, theta. We'll be able to tell really quickly if it's right or not. Boom, it's correct. That's the right one for us. The only other thing they could have done is maybe, hey, I had to throw a negative in front. I didn't need that here. Okay, so there's my setup. We got that. And then we wanted the shaded region. Anybody have restrictions for me there? What do you think, Eva? Pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. Anything special that you did to find them? Good. I like that. So she said since it's odd, she just went ahead and went to 180 or just pi here because we didn't need the second one. That would give her the full graph and, and then work from there. Okay, cool. She worked from there. We could do some trace. And just kind of figure out when I had to trace. I started tracing right there at 0.52, which you could use your math skills and say, oh, yeah, that's pi over 6. And we would continue that out until we get to uh, right there. All right, cool. 5, 5, or 6, 2.62. If you don't believe me, tip, plug it in. Sec, uh, hit trace, and then type in 5 pi over 6 and see that it's in the middle. And if I go that way, it's that side. We good? Don't overthink that. Last one. You've got that graph right there. Try and write the equation of that graph. Did you already see it? All right, good. I have a fast eraser. Write the equation of that graph. Go. Let's check it. Uh, first thing we're starting off, what shape is that? If we were to say categorize that as something, what category does that fall into? cardioid and remember it with a cardioid it's something plus or minus something and then we need a function which function is this is this going to be sine or is this going to be cosine 
sine because it has y-axis symmetry. So it's sine of just regular theta, no number in front because it's not a rose. If I go to that point, a couple things we can point out here is where that maximum is. Since the maximum goes down here to 10, then we know that these two numbers added together are going to get me 10. So it's a cardioid. What's going to be true about these two numbers? They're the same. If they're the same and it's going to add to get me a total of 10, what is each number going to be? Five. The other thing, and I forget one of my students earlier discovered that, but wherever it touches on the other axis, the one that it's not symmetrical to, is going to be the same as the constant that's added to it because this would be zero at that spot. Sine would be zero right there. So it would just be five. That's why up here, oh, I erased it, but it was two minus eight cosine theta. It touched your graph at two on this axis. Okay. That's how we could make that distinction if you're kind of stuck as to what's going on. Questions there? Remember, that is not the whole test. That is half of the test. It's the graphing portion. The other half is what we did on Friday on whiteboards. Okay. So to practice some of that other stuff, go ahead and pull out an internet's capable device and let's play some quizzes.